what is inside the ship's lifeboat. Have you ever wondered what it is like in a ship's lifeboat and what it contains for survival? With the modern advancements on ships such as cruise ships and ocean liners, it is a no-brainer that the safety features of such ships would also be updated. Whether it is a partially enclosed or a free-fall lifeboat, the equipment you will need are all the same. If things go awry on your sea voyage and your ship starts sinking, what would you do? Jump in the water? Start screaming? Or stay calm, put on your life jacket, and get to the lifeboats ASAP? What action are you going to take? I'd choose the latter if I were you. But first, what are the different lifeboats? Each ship must have sufficient lifeboats to evacuate 37.5% of the passengers and crew on either side, as per Solus standards. Whereas inflatable or rigid life rafts should hold 25% of the vessel's capacity on each side. Lifeboats are classified into three types based on their purpose, usage, and efficiency. Open lifeboats. These lifeboats, as the name implies, are open and have no roof. They are generally driven manually by paddles. A compression ignition engine could also be used to steer the lifeboat at times. However, due to the present high safety standards, open lifeboats have been ruled out. They are extremely rare on older ships. Closed lifeboats. Closed lifeboats have a roof that protects the passengers within them from rain, ocean currents, and severe winds. If these boats are tipped, they will remain upright by themselves. There are two types of closed lifeboats, fully enclosed and partially enclosed lifeboats. Hyperbaric lifeboats. On these boats, a diving chamber that can be sealed off is equipped with hatches big enough for individuals to pass through and out without having to decompress first. The pressure vessel provides pressurized breathing gas supply to enhance internal air pressure. Freefall lifeboats. For optimal release, freefall lifeboats are maintained and deployed from such a downward sloping boat ramp. They are heavy and sturdier to withstand collisions with seawater when dropped straight from the ship. Fireproof lifeboats. These boats, which are well protected to endure blazing chemicals, are employed during oil spills. The great durability of nature enables it to encapsulate the vessel from fire and flames up for up to 8 minutes once submerged in the water. Now that we have shown you the different kinds of life rafts, let's look at the different releasing mechanisms and how each works. Lifeboat Release Mechanisms The most crucial factor regardless of the lifeboat's type is to guarantee that it launches swiftly and precisely in order to help those in need as soon as possible. As a result, there are three distinct types of boat release systems. The offload mechanism, the onload mechanism, and the free fall lifeboat release mechanism. Offload mechanism. After the boat is totally submerged, the system releases the life rafts. It has a hydrostatic piston component at the bottom that is linked to the operational handle. Once in the water, the water pressure lifts the lever up, releasing the fall wire. Onload mechanism. The system is designed to release lifeboats from the cable while crew members remain inside the boat. It is activated as the boat is ready to hit the water in order to ensure a safe touchdown of the lifeboat without causing serious damage to the boat or hurting the personnel on board. Free Fall Lifeboat Release Mechanism The Free Fall Lifeboat includes an internal lever that, when pulled, releases the lifeboat which is then released from its stored position. It allows the boat to slip through into the inclined ramp and into the water surface. Other developments in life rafts and release systems are being explored. International Life-Saving Appliance Code LSA Code The International Life-Saving Appliance Code or LSA Code is an international law publication. 
The code informs us about various life-saving items such as life vests, life boys, immersion suits, flares, and survival crafts. The code states, for instance, that life rafts must be capable of traveling at 6 knots for 24 hours while fully loaded, or 2 knots when pulling a fully loaded 25-person life raft. In the event that the motors fail, they must have enough oars to make headway in calm seas. However, freefall lifeboats do not require oars, which makes sense since they would inflict serious damage during the drop. What is inside the ship's lifeboat? A lifeboat is sufficient to bring passengers to safety, but every boat must be equipped with basic life-saving equipment. Here is the equipment in the lifeboat. Flares. As rescuers approach, we can use a variety of tools to attract their attention. There are four rocket parachute flares that are visible from a large distance and six hand flares for a closer distance, especially during the night. During daytime, two buoyant smoke floats that bulge out orange-colored smoke that can be a great indicator for rescue aircraft. Why not make use of the sun during the day? To attract the attention of passing ships, you can utilize the signaling mirror you have. However, in some ways, it is simpler at night since lights stand out so vividly against a dark sky. You have a powerful searchlight. You even have a torch, backup bulb, and batteries if you want to communicate using Morse code. Whistles are also included. Signaling mirror. A signaling mirror is a gadget that reflects sunlight in order to attract the attention of a passing ship or a rescuing aircraft. Any reflective object may be used. However, signal mirrors are intended to make it significantly easier to aim your flash to ensure that you are beaming the proper location. They contain a hole in the center with a retro-reflective layer that enables you to direct a bright signal towards your target. Compass A portable compass should be included aboard a lifeboat in order to assess the direction that it is to be directed. Carrying one is necessary since it is a vital part needed to stay on course throughout rescue missions. Embarkation Ladder an embarkation or evacuation ladder consists of two ropes connected by metal or wooden steps that are used to climb or descend from one ship to the other when in an emergency procedure. Pilot ladders, as they're often called, must be properly secured and kept at the ship's strongest point midpoint. The ladder must be kept clear of any ship discharges and extend the whole distance from the ship's deck to the water surface. Anchor. You will need to drop the sea anchor to keep the boat close to the ship. A sea anchor is similar to a huge fabric bucket that is intended to flow ahead of the lifeboat. The boat will typically be dragged along when there is any wind. A sea anchor's resistance will keep your nose pointed into the wind, improve the comfort of the boat, and reduce the speed at which you drift away from the ship's location. First Aid Kit a first aid kit is available in case someone is wounded. There is an extinguisher that can deal with Class B or oil fires. And if a fire does start, there are two hatchets, one at each end. So you're able to evacuate the boat if necessary. You'll also be more prone to cutting objects like a furious painter. You can use a jackknife to cut tiny ropes, materials, food, and other items. You have a basic set of equipment for simple changes in case of a problem with the machinery. Every lifeboat must have a medical kit with basic medications, sutures, and first aid supplies to treat minor injuries. Anti-sickness tablets. Even before you leave the ship, you will come across anti-sea sickness medicines. Everybody will have enough supplies in the lifeboat for 48 hours. It is vital to take them since they reduce fluid loss. Even if you do not even typically become seasick, you still must take yours since all it takes to start is one person getting sick and a domino effect reaction will happen. Painter The painter is the next item you will utilize after it is time to launch the lifeboat. 
The painter is not related to the arts, by the way. He will be given two painters. One will be permanently affixed to the aft end of the lifeboat while it is stowed on a ship. The concept is that if the lifeboat needs to launch while the ship is making movement, the painters will keep it facing forward to avoid flipping the boat. You'll probably need to remove the painter to get away, which is why you have a spare. It offers you a line that can be useful for anything, such as hauling lifeboats. Dipper Portable drinking water is a very valuable commodity when stuck in a lifeboat and must be used wisely to last longer. Unfortunately, given to the swaying action of the sea, there is a high risk of water spilling while pouring. A dipper helps to keep lifeboat water from spilling out. Food rations In the event the passengers have to remain on board for several days, food is kept in lifeboats and rescue boats as an emergency ration. Glucose, wheat flour, vitamins, soya oil, and water are all part of the preserved food ration. In contrast to fully stocking the lifeboat, it is critical that it is inspected and kept up to date on a regular basis to guarantee its continued efficiency. Fishing tackle and tin openers. Every lifeboat also contains a set of fishing equipment. However, this equipment is more present for morale boosts than for food. It provides you something to do. Nevertheless, consuming raw fish will dehydrate you. Therefore, you should not contemplate it unless you already have a good supply of water. There are three tin openers on the lifeboat, since the last thing you'd want is to have some tin fruit and not be able to open it, even if you can always bring extra food and drink with you when you escape the lifeboat. Rescue Coits and Thermal Protective Aid The final pieces of tools that handle various emergencies that may occur on board. If you need to recover someone from the cold water, you have two rescue coits with 30 meters of buoyant rope that you can toss at any individual in the water and then bring them back on board. Every boat contains at least two thermal protection aids. However, boats equipped for more than 20 people will have spares so that 10% of the occupants could use one. You can wrap them if they are cold. In conclusion, incidents of ships sinking nowadays are very rare. But knowing the very basic things about ship's lifeboat and its included equipment is as important as planning your itinerary during your cruise. Where everyone's life on board, the lifeboat is at stake. It is important to know your role during the event. If you have learned plenty of information about the survival equipment you can find inside the ship's lifeboat, show your support by liking this video. If you have not yet subscribed to our channel, now is the best time to click that subscribe button and the notification bell icon to notify you on new videos. Thank you guys and I will see you again on the next one.